for hours. <laughs> Wake up, Sean, it's half past eight. You gotta go to school and you're gonna be late. I count to four before I open this door, and if you're still in bed, you're gonna beat me instead. <laughs> Don't worry, Mom. I'm up on my feet. I'm worse than dressed and I'm looking neat. Man, what's the rush? Man, it's only school. There's plenty of time, so chill out. Be cool. Now I'm signing off from the hardest MC who's fresher than the rest, badder than the best. I'm from Peckham, so there's no contest. Morning, Mrs. Ambrose. Oh, morning, Louise. Did you sleep well? Yeah, fine, thanks. Well, if you go downstairs to the kitchen, I'll come down and make breakfast in a minute. Okay. Okay. Mum? Has the post arrived yet? No, not yet. Gloria, mm. I want you to go downstairs and make some breakfast for Louise. I don't want to leave her too long on your own. Well, Mum, Louise believes that women shouldn't be slaves to the kitchen. And she has made a conscious decision not to familiarise herself with kitchen utensils. Oh, yes. Well, you better just go downstairs and reintroduce her to mine. All right. <laughs> yeah? Last time she was here, that child nearly burned my house down making beans and toast. <laughs> Desmond Ambrose, 57 boy, and still handsome. Desmond, how are you? Today I feel 27. That's good. Why, after that rum last night, I feel 63. But pork pie, you are 63. Why, Matthew, you, you're stupid, eh? <laughs> All right, name this tune, the time, the date, the everything. Boss it. Oscar Brown Jr. signifying monkey. Ricard in 1960, Billy Butterfield. Joe Wilder on trumpet. He was almost as good as me. The greatest trumpeter in Guyana, Jazzy D. Amen. <laughs> Matthew, how many times do I have to tell you I don't want that paper in my shop? <laughs> Yes, well, we addressed study on, on the what? Page three? Oh, how many times they blame black people for so many things? No, it's a study on censorship and the press. <laughs> well, in my day, they never teach you worthless things like that. It's just an excuse to read dirty magazines. <laughs> Gloria, make sure you have something to eat before you go out. Gloria, can you remember which of the Bronte sisters wrote Jane Eyre? Um. <laughs> no, wait, wait, um. What's her name? What's her name? Charlotte. How did you know that? I used to have a brain once, you know. <laughs> it's just that I put it away when I married your father. <laughs> Yo, catch you later, Dad. You see that? You know where he learned that? In school. They have evening classes that teach them to walk like that on spray walls with paint. They call it break dance and graffiti art. I call it can't dance and vandalism. Dad, the girls come yet? It's over there, darling. Oh, Anything for me? No. Listen, you two. After you've had this, I want you to go. This is not a cafe, you know. Oh, come on, Cheryl, don't be like that. It's people like us that keep this shop going. Without us, this place wouldn't be the same. Without you, this place would be a barber shop. <laughs> Instead of a bookie and a social club. But you can't just throw us out to roam the streets with nothing to do. I might get into trouble. All right. You can stay on one condition. Just name it. Anything, anything. One of you got to get his hair cut. Ah. <laughs> Obviously, you must be referring to pork pie. He's worn that hat so long, I don't think even he knows what's under it. <laughs> Is that the time? I really must go to college now, otherwise I'll be late. Oh, what's your lecture today, Matthew? Is tabloid journalism undermining the moral fiber of today's urban society? Oh! <laughs> See you later, bye! <laughs> All right, pork pie, it's you. At least you can get these sides cut. Look. Is that the time? I really must go to college now. <laughs> oh, come on. come on, Gloria. I want to see it 
toe. All right. <laughs> Listen to this, right? <laughs> Male, five foot eight tall, sexy, and W.E. Yeah. What does W.E. mean? Well endowed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I want a handsome, rich, intelligent. Yeah. How did you know what W.E. meant? You've done this before, haven't you? No, I haven't. <laughs> Listen, you're not going to find anyone with brains in here, you know. All you're likely to get in here is W.M.s. What's that? Weird men. <laughs> I don't see why. Here, listen to this. <clears throat> At male or the man, you can have the man of your dreams. Ooh. <laughs> From the comfort of your own home. Ooh. So no more boring chat-up lines like... Haven't we met somewhere before, babe? Do you come here often? What well, I'm sister. You cool? I think I know your sister very well. <laughs> How's that, Reginald? Bow on to that. <laughs> tennis racket? I tell you what, next time I'll put in two wavy lines and we can call it a tennis ball, all right? Bye-bye. Next. Sunglasses to wear a suit like that. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a precision tailoring, you'll see it there. You buy that on holiday? Nah, I got it from two ex cons down at me. They're doing tailoring on one of those restart courses. They should restart on the suit. <laughs> <laughs> How much did it cost? A wanna. What do you think, eh? Miami Vice? For a suit like that, you need legal advice. <laughs> How was your holiday leave? It was wicked. Nominary. <laughs> By the way, where did you go? J.A., L.A., U.S.A. And that was just the name of the discos. <laughs> Spain, Costa Bomb, Club 18 to 30. It was all the S's, right? Sun, surf, sand, and see you after supper, senorita. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever thought of saving up your money and investing it? What for? For a rainy day. Ah, oh, this is England, Des. It rains every day. <laughs> instead of going to J.A. in Spain, you could have saved up the money instead and gone to the real Jamaica, check out your roots where you was born. I've seen where I was born. I drive past it every day. King's College Hospital, Camberwell, London. <laughs> oh, can I help you? Pinch me, Des, son. I'm not dreaming, mate. All right. We haven't met before, eh? Don't tell me you're not from around here, right? Nah, because if you were, I'd certainly know about you, and you no doubt would have heard about me. Listen, I've got a couple of tickets for me boxing club, dinner and dance in a couple of weeks' time. I'm fighting. I'll knock him out first round if you can. How about it, innit? Occupe-toi de tes oignons, sinon je vais te faire un bal, espèce de crétin. I see you haven't lost your touch, Lee. Good morning. Who was that little boy? Oh, don't worry about him. He's harmless, really. <laughs> I guessed. Yeah. What can I do for you? You know, fancy a couple of tickets to see me box plus dinner plus dance, Des. When is it? Thursday fortnight. Ah, Thursday is me and Shirley night out. That's all right. Bring her along. You know she don't like boxing. So how long are you staying for? Oh, two, maybe three weeks. It depends. Mm. On what? Oh, my brother Jean-Pierre. He teaches French over here. Oh, really? Yes, he's just started an adult language course at Peckham Civic Centre. When? On Monday evenings. He wants me to help him out. Uh-huh. What does ext find mean? Well, if you've got a character or a command and you have to find it, the computer locates it for you. Ah. Can I have a go? <laughs> yeah. Press that key. <clears throat> what, what's going on? <laughs> Don't worry, Dad. It's talking to itself. You mean a computer can talk to itself? Yeah, it's got its own language. Here, check it out, Dad. <laughs> I'm sorry, I asked. <laughs> I can safely say your mother and I are through our learning days. Oh, are we? Well... As a matter of fact, I've decided to take French lessons. What? Oh, great, Mum. What do you want to learn French for? Well, you always on about the children's education, so I thought, why not? But that's different. They're young. They have to go to school. And it's free. <laughs> what are you trying to say? I too old? Yes. Uh, no, I mean, well, I don't see the point. Oh, come on, Dad. Don't be no fuddy daddy. Your children can't even talk English properly if you want to learn French. 
I just want to do something to exercise my brain, and you're making all this fuss. What's your problem? Nothing. Sean, it's ready. You think I'll be wasting my time? No. You think I'm too old? No. Hey, you just frightened of being left behind? No. Look, all those in favor of mum learning French say yes. We. we. Your aunt voted, Dad. Since when do we vote? I make the decisions in my house. Ah, oh, thank you, Desmond. <laughs> with these photographs are, you can't see the faces properly, man. Hmm. Are they bums? Louise! <laughs> well, what's wrong with that? Men are always staring at ours. Why can't we stare at theirs? John Barnes has got a nice bum. Oh, yeah. But that's not what I'm talking about. I mean, you think somebody at Mail Order Man would know that black people don't photocopy well? Look! <laughs> Same geezer. They've only got one. Don't be stupid. Oh, come on, Gloria. You've been looking at these for over a week now. I don't know. Look, I'll tell you what. You close your eyes, pick out three. We'll go round to Denise's and she can help us pick out Mr. Wright. All right. Hang on. Whichever one I pick, how will I recognise him when I meet him? Easy. Red rose in the lapel. He'll wear one, you'll wear one. Well, that's original, isn't it? Bonsoir, mes enfants. Oh, bonsoir, maman. Où est-ce que tu vas? Uh, je vais rencontrer Jean-Pierre. Oh. Your friend, she's getting very good, Mrs. Ambrose. Oh, yes. Jean-Pierre thinks I'm his best student. Oh. Yeah, he says I pick up French very easily. That's not all he wants you to pick up. <laughs> oh, Gloria. He's a nice, respectable teacher. <laughs> and he's taught me some very useful phrases. Oh, yeah, like what? Et toi-même, tu pourrais bien faire la vaisselle, non? <laughs> That's great, Mum. What does it mean? Would, Would you, you like, like to, to do, do the, the washing, washing up? up? <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on. We all know what you got. <laughs> what have I got, then? Three, five, and four, one. <laughs> I'm not playing. You've been cheating. Don't be silly. You should learn to read the game, stupid idiot. <laughs> Who are you calling stupid idiot, you stupid idiot? At least I'm not as stupid as you look. Don't y'all play dominoes in Africa? In the Gambia, we play trivial pursuit. <laughs> look, you West Indians forget that you are direct descendants. Without us, you would not exist. <laughs> Me no. I'd be very grateful. <laughs> but I'd be even more grateful if he was to play the three five. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, we better be off if we're going to Hackney. Why are we going to Hackney? To the boxing, dinner, and dance. But I thought it was Streatham. No, it's definitely Hackney. Actually, lads, it's our Wickham. Where? <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, no. Slow down. Look, it's all taken care of. There's a coach outside to take you to High Wickham. Where is High Wickham? I thought you knew everything. <laughs> sure, you won't come then, Des? No, I told you, Tarzi and Charlie, and my night out. I mean, I would, but she don't like to see your box. Yeah, well, when I beat Lloyd and become world champion, she's gonna have to watch me. Lloydy? Yeah, Lloyd Arnigan, he's soft. <laughs> Open that gate. I don't want to be late because if I do, I have to blame it on you. Uh -huh. Before you ask, I'll be back at nine. I'll give you my word, I'll be right on time. Uh -huh. I'm going around the things with my computer program because tomorrow morning he's got an exam. Uh -huh. He's paying me money to show it out for him because he ain't too clever. In fact, he's quite dim. Uh -huh. I'm making loads of longer, Dad. Autographs. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, the lovely they get, man. Look. Oh, come on. You can't chicken out now. Where are you going tonight? We're going around Denise's. Well, get back by half past ten. Dad, that's too early. We're only going down the road. I know, but I'm worried about muggers, rapists and perverts. Dad, it's all right. We know who they are. We go to school with them. <laughs> Hang on. Oh, lad, girl, sure you look nice, eh? You didn't tell me we was going out, out. <laughs> Hang on, I'll get changed. Is baby going? We're not going anywhere. I told you last week, I got a French lesson tonight. Dress like that? 
I thought your lessons was on Mondays. But Jean Pierre. Jean Pierre, this Jean Pierre, that. I wouldn't trust a black man with a name like Jean Pierre. <laughs> He's taking me to see a French film. He can't go to see a dirty film? <laughs> it's not a dirty film. And anyway, it's a good way to learn. To learn what? The language. You call it learning a language, I call it a date. Desmond, listen. In the 30 years we've been married, I ever give you any cause not to trust me? No. Hmm. I told you before, man, you should have remembered. Well, I remember. It's just that I forget. <laughs> I'm sorry. Look, I gotta go. Otherwise, I'll be late. Um, when will you be back? Eleven o'clock. <laughs> Jean Pierre, this. Jean Pierre, that. Jean Pierre Smith. <laughs> Who is that? It's a burglar. Wearing high heel shoes and a fur coat. With a front door key. What time do you call this? I call this two o'clock in the morning. Why? What time you call it? Where have you been? On the way back from the cinema, the car broke down. Jean-Pierre phoned the AA. They took ages. Well, you could have run. Well, I didn't know it would have taken so long. You told me to be back by... Look, Desmond, I'm your wife, not Gloria, trying to make excuses. Anyway, I don't want to talk no more about it. It was a disaster. Oh, I knew it would be. <laughs> <laughs> what you know, Desmond, hmm? What you know about me. Hmm? You know what shoe size I take? What do I got to do with it? Everything. I know the size of your shoes. The size of your neck, your chest, your waist. How you hate the smell of violin cabbage. And I also know that when I said I was going to learn French, you thought, what a stupid old fool wants to learn French for? I gave up my studies to marry you, remember? So all I may be, but stupid I am not. Not just because I don't exercise this body anymore. It don't mean to say I can't exercise this mind. So, you better put on your running shoes, otherwise I left you in the starting blocks. Well, I don't know if I want to run anymore. I just want to rest, build a house and plot a land back home and retire. Stop dreaming, Desmond. This is England, 1989. And we know near up building a house back in the Guyana now than we were in 1969. You think I ain't gonna make it? You think I ain't gonna get there? Well, I'm gonna build that house if it's the last thing I do, even if I don't live there. <laughs> it would be for the children, so they could know the country of origin, the culture, its roots. So that when one day if Tachi decide to throw us out, we have somewhere to go to. And that goes for you too, little foot, Christy. Get it right. Daily Thompson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, Daily. I forget it was an all around. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> you remember when we first met? Mm. At your college dance? Yeah. Jazzy D. Playing in your band, wearing your Miles Davis sunglasses. <laughs> you were Mr. Cool. You remember the tune? Mm-hmm. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Shirley. Yeah. Women running shoes. <laughs> Hold on through it, this. Gloria, you can't chicken out now. Well, if you want to do it so much, why don't you wear it here? But Gloria, he's coming to the shop. He'll be here soon. Well, he won't be looking at me because I won't be wearing the rose. <sighs> Gloria! Hey, 
Why 57? And you still drive me wild. <laughs> oh, gentlemen, good morning. Come in, do come in. Is everything okay? I am cool. <laughs> How did the fight go? Did you win? Win? I scared him so much he didn't even turn up. <laughs> <laughs> what are you gentlemen having? The usual. Yeah, man. Ah, surely. Three teas, toast, and one coffee, please. Are you all right? Man, I am cool. Yes, <laughs> one. Are you sure you're all right? Man, I am in love. In love. In love? When did you meet this woman? Last night. You sneaky licky. No wonder you didn't want to come to the fire. What's her name? Where did you meet her? Shut, shut. This one, number five. No, 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 listen, 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 look, 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 Ah, nice. Her name is Shirley. We met at a college dance. You can't love Shirley. She's your wife. Bonjour. Speaking of love, I just popped in to say au revoir. Oh, you can't go yet. Yeah. I've only just got to know you. Yeah. Some other time, eh? Shirley, good luck with your lessons. You must come and visit me in Paris sometime, eh? Oh, thank you. Desmond, a romantic weekend in Paris. Uh, How about if I give you a lift to the airport, eh? Bonjour, Cherry. What's he say? <laughs> Hello, darling. Petit garçon stupide, arrête de me faire perdre mon temps. Et grandis, sors de mes pattes. Oh, say some more. I love it when you talk dirty. <laughs> Au revoir, tout le monde. Hold on, wait for me. I have cracked it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's no point in a saying about now. Well, I want to see what I'm missing. Don't I? Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> Excuse me, ladies. Have you seen a lady wearing a red rose? <laughs> Can I help you? Gloria! <laughs> oh, you're even more beautiful than I imagined. There's mine! <laughs> From the long water nights with an ocean breeze to the dump and to the rain of London City. We come from the sun to live in the cold. I miss me rum. I want my coconut tree. Don't scratch my soca. Chicken held in front, closely followed by Demon Run, Mellow Fellow, and Bombay Duck. And I have two chapatis, an older chap with me. I said, I can't touch. Two so hoppies. Ladies, tip of yours better come off. Look, I didn't tell you to bet on it. All I said was, it's a died, sir. Well, it hasn't let you down yet, has it? It's out in front, mate. We come up to the last <laughs> round. Hey, Mellow Fellow, Bombay Duck, and Demon Run. Oh, that's right. 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 And as they come up to the line, it's Bombay Duck Woo! from Mellow Fellow. Oh, it's Bombay Duck! <laughs> Taz. How much did you win, darling, sweetheart, light of my life? Nothing, dearest, sweetheart, fruit of my tree. What do you mean, nothing? That's what you're going to get, nothing. <laughs> Next. Yes, you, Vincent. This is a barber shop, not a public library. You mean you caught people here? Yes. I'm the wrong place is the betting shop I want. Look, just put your backside on that seat. <laughs> Honestly, Paul Pie, send it. Give me the tip. This old man owns the horse. I thought they owned Mellow Fellow. No, no, his cousin owns that one. Them have them finger in everything. What do we have? Oh, he's off again. What are you talking about? When it comes to business in England, black people don't have any. West Indians don't have any. Oh, sorry, Mr. Wise. <laughs> What's so special about you, then? Uh, some Africans are extremely good businessmen. Some Africans asking for a punch on the nose. Look, look, I'm a West Indian businessman, and so is Desmond. That's what I mean. You don't have anything. <laughs> Asians own corner shops, takeaways, restaurants. Race horses. Turks and the Greeks own fish and chips. And doner kebabs. Doner kebabs? Your doner was in them, dear. Uh... <laughs> Far from a barber shop in Peckham. 
and a few dodgy goods off the back of a lorry. What business do we own? Well, judging from the papers, we seem to have a monopoly on muggings and street crime. Well, what a negative conversation. Now, we are excelling in all sorts of areas, and I don't mean just athletics and pop music and boxing. We now have members of parliament. Hmm? Yeah. We in education. Hmm? Local government on the telly. Take our eldest son, Michael, for instance. I'd like to take him as far away as possible and leave him there. No, I wouldn't have a bad word said against him. He works very hard in that bank. Huh? Now, if you want to achieve, you just have to go for it. He gone so far, we never even see him. Well, I'd better go for it. What do you think you're going for? Sand its throat. Find out what happened to that horse of his. Do you still want to lift down the market, Shell? Yes, thanks. Well, I suppose I better go for it, too. <laughs> thanks for the coffee, Shell. Anytime, Matthew. Oh, what's your lecture today? The propensity to consume due to the changing economic infrastructure. <laughs> oh, Lee, can you drop me in the high road? You name it, Matt, and I'll drop you in it. <laughs> Hi. Uh, take a seat. You know, boxing's not the same since Cassius Clay changed his name to Muhammad Ali. I mean, what kind of a name is that that's not a boxing name? You're right, man. You should have a name like uh, Sugar, Bomber, Rocky, Dark Destroyer, a ragamuffin. <laughs> you see, that's why the Americans don't take Frank Bruno as a serious contender. I mean, he should have a name like Brutal Bruno, uh, Crucial Bruno. Uh, you know, I mean, Harry Bruno. <laughs> Why, that is a good point. Hi. Uh, why, I hear about the wet look. <laughs> but that is wet. So wet you can bathe in it. <laughs> yes, it's my own product. I'm here to see the proprietor. Nobody here by that name. <laughs> That's me. What can I do you for? Daryl. Daryl Montefiore. Short and curlies. You must have heard of us. No. You ever hear about uh, short and curly's, Paul Pat? Yeah, man. Short and curly's the are... The fastest growing new chain in London. We have a number of salons in the West End, Victoria, North Kensington. North Kensington? Where is that? Uh, Paddington. <laughs> That's nice. You see, Popeye, a black businessman. My name is Desmond. Pleased to meet you. This young man's only young, and he's achieved all this. In the next ten years, he'll be a international businessman. <laughs> That's very nice of you, Des. I don't have to tell you it's not been an easy road, but you have to make the most of your opportunities and, uh, Go for it. Spoken like a true businessman. Well, it takes a good businessman to know a good businessman, Des. Actually, the reason why I'm here, Des, is that I want to buy you out. What? We've done our market research and we think that Peckham is potentially a very profitable area. It has a large black community who I think will appreciate our creative styles. Now, you've been a barber here for more than 20 years, so rather than waste needless time and money setting up a rival salon, we'd like to buy you out. There is a great potential in this place for today's entrepreneur. So rather than hammer you into the ground with competition, we're going to give you a way out. So what do you think, Des? You know what I think, Daryl? Tell me, Des. <laughs> I think you ought to get out of my shop now. <laughs> we're going to offer you a good price. Why don't you think about it and give me a ring? Or I can come back next Friday. Out! So Friday about three. Out! Have a nice day. <laughs> Damn cheek. You know what I think? What? I think you should ask him how much he was offering. Who was that? He calls himself Daryl Montefiore. Oh, short and curlies. I know them. Yeah, what's wrong with that? What's wrong is that slippery little wet look man want to buy our shop. A file of facts, man. What's a file of facts, man? A wally who walks around with file of faxes just to show everyone how busy and important they are. Mm. I better tell Matthew about the file of faxes. You can't buy our shop. This is our home. You didn't say yes, did you? You didn't even let him make an offer. Oh, good for you, Dad. No one's going to take this away from us. We don't want some wet look blow dry clip joint. Yeah, this is more than a barber shop, Mr. Ambrose. It is? This is a community centre. Is it? A confessional would drop in. Yeah, this is a place where people are served tea and toast, watch TV and engage in social intercourse. Not in my shop, you know. <laughs> but hardly anybody come here to cut their hair anymore. I would take the money if I was you. No, you don't want to give in to people like that, ruthless capitalists. Yeah, hairdressing change, just that to scalp you. Oh, time to mobilise. So we'll start a campaign. Yeah. We're shown much Desmond's is needed. Support the little man. Oh, sorry, Mr. <laughs> Ambrose. Leave it to us, Dad. You see, Porkway? 
Who say black people aren't enterprising, eh? Well, I think I better go short and curly and get a year cut because I'm not going to Go sit down, you ass. <laughs> what are you looking at? You just going to stand there? 26 years running your own shop is not a bad innings. With the money you'd get, you could build your own house back home. What are you going to do? Stand and fight or take the money and run? I think you should take the money and run, and I go run with you. <laughs> oh, shut up, old boy. Look at you sweeping the floor. You can do this all your life. Remember when we used to sit on the seawall dreaming of England? <laughs> we thought we'd be the kings of jazz. Uh, we were just Georgetown dreamers, boy. <laughs> uh, uh, sweet sticks, jazzy dee, pork pie. Shirley Father said she was mad to come up here with you. But you always said you will make your fortune and prove him wrong. Remember? Right. There's no harm in finding out what he's offering. <laughs> Poor pie. You ain't got a home to go to? Nope. <laughs> All right, we're going. Who was that you're calling? Oh, nobody in particular. It was the short on Curly's man, wasn't it? Well, I just started, man. Well, how many times I have to tell you no? But it might be a good offer. We might not get another one again. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is our shop, Desmond. Hmm? It was a long, hard fight for us to buy this shop. Remember? We scrimp and save. So if you think some little upstart gonna no waltz in here, wave a checkbook around and take away our shop without us even batting an eye, then you got another thing coming. I married a fighter, not a coward. Who you call it a coward? You. <laughs> right. I'm gonna fight them. <laughs> Nobody gonna come here and take away my shop. This is my shop. Our shop. These are my chairs. Our chairs. Those are my plastic flowers. Yes. <laughs> oh, I don't know, Shirley. How are we going to fight them? Listen, tomorrow morning, I'll make an appointment for you to see the bank manager. Talk about getting a loan, hmm? We'll do the place up a bit. How up on which bit? Well, we'll give it a new coat of paint, get some new chairs, get rid of the plastic flowers. Ah! And it would be like a new shop, a new beginning for us. Hmm? Hmm. And to start the ball rolling, I bought us a little something, courtesy of Bombay Duck. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys, you can't do that. You can't have a snog in the middle of my rap. Mom and Dad should have more discretion behind closed doors for a heavy neck incision. Don't do it in public. That's what you said. The best place to do it is behind the bike shed. <laughs> this is my shop. We bought it so we can kiss any way we like in it. <laughs> You're wicked, Dad. Me no. <laughs> Glasses ready. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're coming. Yes, can I help you? I hope so. My name is Mr. Ambrose. I have an appointment to see the manager. What is it concerning? <laughs> Alone. <laughs> right, sir. Alone. Uh, yes. Ah, uh, I'm afraid the manager's busy. Your appointment is with his assistant. I'll talk to anybody as long as they'll give me, um, a loan. Right this way, sir. Excuse me, please. He'll be with you in a minute. Oh, thank you very much. Good morning, Mr. Ambrose. You? Take a seat, Father. 
Well, after Finchley Road, they moved me here. Next stop, deputy manager, then who knows? One day manager. So how long have you been here? Three weeks and two days. <laughs> you never even been to see us, not even dropped in? I've been busy. I've left messages on that stupid machine of yours. You never called me back. You've never left a message on the machine. Yeah, well, your mother has. What is this world you come into when you got to talk to a machine that talks to your son before your son talks to you? <laughs> Whenever I talk to you, we always end up arguing. And you know why that is, don't you? You always get on your high horse with your ears and graces. The way you behave, you would think you was born with a silver spoon in your mouth. But father, what did I well, do? Well, look, 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 you just can't call me dad or pops or whopping old man. What's wrong with father? Well, it, 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 it don't sound right. <laughs> you wanted to know why I haven't been around? It's because of you. What about me? You ashamed of me? I always know you've been ashamed of me. I'm not ashamed of you. Well, that's why you don't come wrong. Dad, I'm 28. I've got my own life to lead. Well, it didn't lead you wrong to our door once in a while to see your mother. Look, Bob, come in. Is everything all right? Yes. Uh... <laughs> yes, thank you, Mandy. Um. Interest rates on a loan. He thinks they're a bit steep. Yeah. Would you like me to get the manager? Uh, no, 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 no. This man's doing a good job. Uh, yes, we uh, seem to be reaching an agreement. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's just get this straight. Just because I'm black, it doesn't mean to say that I cannot appreciate the finer things in life. And just because I'm black, it equally doesn't mean that I can't have ambition or speak the Queen's English. It wouldn't go down too well if someone came to ask for a loan and I said, Wapen, me can't give you a loan because I'm an feel is a idiot. <laughs> what you don't realise is that times are changing and you're not changing with them. A war. <laughs> Now, you want a loan? I didn't come here for a checkup. Don't start. And what do you require the loan for, Mr. Ambrose? I require the loan. Look, this is stupid, man. Just give me the money. Look, I'm sorry. <laughs> but there are formalities. Formalities? Why well, you can't treat me like your father instead of somebody you don't know from Adam? OK, we'll go again. Father, why do you require a loan? Son, I require a loan to do up the shop. Ah. What brought this on? Well, we've been forced in it by the short and curly. <laughs> Wet look people. Yes, 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 I know them. I get my hair cut there. Not very well. <laughs> I mean, they want to buy us out or you'll be forced into competition, so your mother thinks we should get a loan. Yep. What exactly are you going to do with the loan? Well, you know, we're going to do up the place a bit, uh, get a few new customers. She wants me to get some new plastic flowers. <laughs> Dad, I think you and I need to have a talk. What are we doing now? Uh, no, a proper talk. I think I'd better come round to the shop sometime. Let me see. Uh, no, I can't make tonight. Squash night. <laughs> How about tomorrow? In the gym tomorrow. And then I'm having uh, dinner with the manager. Mm. It's very difficult. Look, I'll tell you what. I'll come here tonight after my game. Let's see now. Yeah, let's say uh, 7.30. Well, if you say so. OK, then. 7.30 it is then, Mr. Ambrose. Ah, oh, Mr. Patel. Uh, if you're coming later, would you like to stay for supper? I know you miss your mother fish soup and bakes. <laughs> Uh, shall we talk about it later, Mr. Ambrose? Ah, Robbie, <laughs> nice to see you. You come for a loan? Don't worry, my son will fix it up. He is the assistant to the assistant to the assistant manager. <laughs> what you think? I look all right? You look good, Shirley. I mean, was all the fuss is only Michael. Well, it's not every day our son comes round to visit. Thank God for that. Yes, man. I mean... It come to a pretty pass when you got to ask your own son for a loan. That's what banks are for. But I used to give him pocket money, now it feels as if I asking him for pocket money. <laughs> yeah, but the banks have got bigger pockets than you, Dad. They're called vaults. I know that. Come on, Dad, we're still waiting for your slogan for our campaign. All right, how about... If you want to look like a girly, go to short and curly. <laughs> Short and curly, too girly, girly. If you want your hair cut, come to Desmond and Shirley. <laughs> That's wicked, Mum. Wicked? Your mum isn't wicked. 
Why well, you can't talk prof instead of all this hard murder, crispy, fresh nonsense? Because that's soft, that's why. Hard isn't soft. And where does murder come into it? Your father right, Sean. You really ought to talk properly. Oh, like Michael, you mean? Well, I wouldn't go as far as that. <laughs> in the fridge here for Michael, and now he's only one. Well, Michael only got one moat. <laughs> Hello. Michael! Look, everybody. Michael, come to visit. Well, is I invited him, Shirley? Oh, so, Michael, let me look at your good. Wait, you can't remember what your own son looked like? <laughs> If he came wrong a little more often to visit his mother, I wouldn't forget. I've been hmm? busy, Mother. Busy? Busy? I always found the time to look after you when you were young. Looking after three... four children. <laughs> I always found time. So don't you talk to me about busy. Shame what? <laughs> look like you lose weight. You're sure you've been eating properly? Of course I am, Mother. Well, look, now that you're so near, why don't you come wrong after work and get some proper food? Well, I'm OK, Mother. I'm OK, Mother. <laughs> Same old childish Gloria. Oh, same old plummy Michael. How's market fetcher these days? Oh. One big happy family. Okay, Dad, should we have our discussion? Why not? Michael, just a little something to keep you going till. <laughs> Dinner's a bit late. It'll be five minutes. <laughs> Well, look, Dad, you've got to talk seriously. You see, if you're thinking about taking out a loan, you've got to think about how you're going to pay back the interest and eventually how you're going to pay back the money you've borrowed. What is this? You're going to be a teacher when you grow up? <laughs> you don't do enough business here, Dad. How do you think you'll manage the repayments? You hear that, Shirley? Your son says we don't do any business here. Well, that's what the campaign's for, Mr. Buppy, to drum up trade. How about this one, sis? Oh, I've had it off at Desmond's. <laughs> Sean! Well, I thought it was a good idea. So, Michael, what you're saying is we can't get this loan? It's not really in my power. And I don't think my boss will consider this shop a good prospect. Well, that's it, then. The end of the line. What? I mean, pork pie was right. We must find out what the man is no. offering. I'm sorry, Mother. Now, when's this Monty Fiore geezer coming back? Next Friday. Right. Not free. I'm talking about free badges for a pound. Come on. Well, Dad, how do we rustle up some more customers? I think it's still a bit too late, you know, Gloria. No, Bobby. Oh. It's my seat, that, you know, Vincent. Nobody sit oh. on my seat. Oh, Mum. Oh, Dad. What are you doing out of school? Indeed. Oh, the headmaster picked out the boys with the longest hair, so to come and get their hair cut to show his support. Oh, great. <laughs> What are you selling my badges for? They're supposed to be free. Nothing's free in England, Sean, me boy. I'll tell you what, I'll cut you in for 30%, all right? We made them at school, though. All right, 50%, yeah? Hi, Good, everybody. lovely. Matthew, we've given up an important lecture to come here today for a haircut. Oh, thank you, Matthew. And what was the lecture today? Is dialectic materialism a strategy of social revolution? <laughs> I'd rather get their hair cut, Matthew. Well, Michael, doesn't it look like a business worth supporting? Yes, I'm impressed. I had no idea. Dad. What? What would you say if I said I could get my hands on £3,000? You haven't been teething money from the bank, have you, sir? No. But I've been thinking, and... Oh, well, I've got a bit of capital, and I think perhaps I was... Well, perhaps we can make something out of the shop after all. We? Who is we? You, me and Mother. Well, I'm proposing that I'll be one of the partners in the business in exchange for my capital investment. You hear that, Shirley? I asked the man for a loan. Now he's planning to take you over my shop. <laughs> I'm not trying to take over anything, but with my money, you'll get the loan that you need without the interest. That way we can keep the business in the family. Like a sleeping partner, you mean? Uh-uh, uh-uh. <laughs> a very wide awake one. <laughs> Are you trying to tell me I can't run my own shop, that I need you to run it for me? With you, not for you. Well, I think it's a good idea. Well, I think it's just another game Michael wants to win. I think it's a good idea if it means the shop's going to get done up. Oh. This deck is getting embarrassing, man. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> All right, babes. <laughs> oh, Des, you ready to talk business? Yeah. And? 
let's talk business. Look around you. This is the Peckham community. I've been running this shop for 20 years, and with my son's help, I'll be running it for another 20. So if it's competition you want, it's competition you're going to get. And I'll tell you something, Mr. Short and Curly. <laughs> you ain't going to win. <laughs> well, I think that's it. Don't you, Dal? OK, Michael. I'll see you for your next haircut, then. Uh-uh. I don't think so. <laughs> okay. Oh, um, Daryl. Yeah? One more thing. What? Um, how much were you going to offer? <laughs> an ocean breeze to the dump and to the rail of London City. We come from the sun to live in the cold. I miss me rum. I want my coconut tree. Don't scratch my sofa. Till the party's over. Let's keep the music sweet. Wind up your waist and feel Don't the heat. Don't scratch my sofa. Tea? Oh, yes, thank you, darling. It's in the pot. <laughs> Mom, happy birthday! Oh, Hi! Thank Before you. We forgot to leave you, but we remembered. We're here. Thank you, look. Oh, thank you, darling. Desmond, look. It's nice. Who is it supposed to be? Oh, it's Willie Mandela. Oh, yes, yes, I can see that now. Happy birthday, Mrs. Ambrose. Oh, Louise, thank you. They're lovely. Aren't they lovely, Desmond? Yes, yes. <laughs> Happy birthday, Mum. Sorry, I couldn't afford a present. Ah, oh, never mind. Well, thank you anyway. Glad this only happens once a year. <laughs> Some mothers are bad. Some aren't so good. But my mum's wicked in this neighbourhood. <laughs> because Dad's so stingy with his pocket money, giving you this card makes me feel funny. I want to save face, even though times are hard. I didn't buy you a present, I bought you a card. Stingy? When I was your age, I didn't even get pocket money. So what's changed? You cheeky little... Oh, this is nice, isn't it, Desmond? My family bought me cards and presents. Even Louise bothered. What did you get, Mum, for her birthday, Dad? Answer your son, Desmond. Who, me? Yes, sir. yes you. Well, it's uh, private. What's so private about you forgetting? I didn't forget, it's just that... You didn't remember? Well, I remembered last night. What about last night? I remembered to wrap your present last night. Uh, uh, there it is. Oh! Oh, you old dog! <laughs> Happy birthday, Shirley! Happy return, Shirley! Lee. There you go, Shell, just for you. Oh. oh, thank you, Lee. It's a tester. <laughs> oh, it's not just a tester, Shell. It's the tester of the most expensive perfume in the world. It's not stolen, is it? Oh, Shell, would I give you Bent Gear for your birthday? Yes. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lee. Oh. Many happy returns of the day, Shirley. Oh, for oh, yeah. me, Matthew. Mm -hmm. What is that? <laughs> this is very nice, Matthew. Is it African? This is a mark of great respect, and it's only given to the oldest tribeswoman of the village. Matthew, <laughs> who wants to be the oldest tribeswoman of Peckham High Road? Where's Uncle Papa? Why he here yet? Well, he announced so... last night that he wouldn't be coming. Yeah, and he was a right funny mood as well. Dad, do you know what's wrong with Uncle Pork Pie? Oh, I don't know. Some people don't like birthdays. Brings back too many memories. He hasn't been the same since his wife left. Well, she left him. Well, it's a long story and... And we don't want to hear about it now. <laughs> because I brought together... In honour of Shirley Ambrose... With great difficulty, the Peckham Posse. Yes, that famous ensemble, the Pea Posse, will sing in the key of off. My latest composition, Opus 173, going out much of my book. Happy birthday! Skip, 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 sk
What you doing? I'm watching the news. <laughs> but you need to hear the news. So why do I need to hear bad news as well as see it? What's the big secret? Nothing. Nothing? Yeah, so why are you all whispering? We weren't whispering, we were just... We were just debating. Yeah, yeah debating. debating. Yeah? Usually when you lot debate, I can hear you halfway down the road. So why are you so secretive? It's a secret debate. Yeah. <laughs> well, instead of having a secret debate, why don't you go and finish your homework? Because he hasn't even started it yet. Neither have they, though. You mean to tell me you haven't done any work yet? Go and make a start now. Why couldn't you keep your big mouth shut? Mum, if I tell you what the secret is, can we do it after supper? No, now. Oh, go on. <laughs> You're like it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> What's the secret? A secret, eh? Looks like I've come at the right time. Michael, why don't you knock before barging in? Gloria. Uh, Gloria, what you fail to remember is that not only am I now a partner in the business downstairs, I happen to also be your older brother. So treat me with some respect. You're a big girl now and I'm a grown-up. Anyway. <laughs> Happy birthday, mother. Wow. Oh, Michael, the lovely, beautiful. Have you eaten? No, it's OK. I'm having supper with some friends of mine. I'm having supper with some friends of mine. <laughs> it's good to hear you still got some. It's OK. I've just come up for the accounts book. I've got some soup. You want me to warm it up for you? No, it's all right, Mother. What about some fried fish? I've got fried fish. <laughs> no, it's all right, Mother. Look, Thank do you. do you want to hear the secret or not? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. OK, what is it? At the first stroke, it will be 6.15 precisely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Look, that is not a toy, Father. Let's, drink. Let's have a look. What do you want a thing like this for, Michael? Tools, Mother. Tools of the trade. The money market never closes. There's a poser phone, Mum. It's how buppies talk to each other. <laughs> you remember when we were young, Shirley? We used to tie a piece of string between two tin cans. <laughs> <laughs> That's their version of that. Yes, but I can ring anywhere in the world on this. You can? Maybe I can ring your auntie, so so. No, you're not. <laughs> going to ring Jamaica. Ah, right? just make me give one car. No, it cost a fortune to make a call on one of these things. Why well, have one then? So you can tell everybody it cost a fortune. <laughs> so what are we going to do about Mr. Pork Pie's party then? What? Pork Pie having a party? How come I haven't been invited? They'll never take you in MI5, will they? <laughs> We're holding a party for him next Friday. I saw him in the post office this morning and he looked really sad. Uh, mm. So we thought we'd sweeten him up a bit, you know, nice it up for him. Hmm, I'm sure you mean well. Yeah, I've made a list of the things that we're going to need. Drinks, entertainment, decorations, hats, party poppers, food and money. <laughs> well, you don't have to go mad. <laughs> Just make some rum punch and play some music. Folk <laughs> pie wouldn't want anything fancy. Just give him a drink and anyway is a party. You want to make it something special? Yeah, a party to remember. He drink the rum, he wouldn't remember a thing. <laughs> No, Dad, we don't want any of that old man drunk and styly. We want something crisp. Yeah, but how are we going to afford it? I know how. You do? It can be part of our business expansion plan. Business what? <laughs> PR for the shop. Look, we can give Uncle Pork Pie a good time and impress some clients. I feel an entrepreneurial opportunity coming. Ooh, can we have that in English? Look, let's for argument's sake call Uncle Pork Pie our oldest customer. But I can think of an argument against that. You can. Well, he's not a customer. He never has his hair cut. All right, then we offer him a free haircut. Make a big fuss of it and get a photo in a local paper. Agreed? Well, I'll pay for it. Agreed. Agreed. Well, say he doesn't want to come. I'll just tell him it's some home cooking and a game of dummy knows he's bound to come. Uh, could you pass me the tin cans and piece of string, please? Uh, uh. Who are you calling? A catering firm I know called Smarty Parties. <laughs> Don't go off your phone, try. 
Is everything ready? No. Yes! <laughs> you know, Michael, it's amazing the things you can do with a few flowers. Anyway, I think I've successfully managed to transform this seedy little place into something, well, a little bit more respectable. Yes, done a wonderful job, St. Clair. Oh, thank you. I only wish it was permanent. Michael, love it. Look, if you ever need a completely new concept for the shop, Smarty Parties also do interior design. Alas, I'm still trying to persuade my father to move me to the 70s, let alone the 90s. Mm. Look, is everything okay? Yes. <laughs> Good, go for it. Shoo, 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 don't touch it. Shoo, shoo, shoo. What is this, eh? A party or a wedding? Since when has pork pie been into flowers? <laughs> Lee, these flowers cost me a lot of money. Yeah, well, it serves you right. You should have come to me, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you sure you know what you're doing, anyway? Oh, yeah, me and SLR. Whoa, we're like that. <laughs> SLR, so what's that? SLR, that's, that's um... That's single lens reflex. Oh, thank you, David Bailey. <laughs> it's good, eh? My own recipe. Rum punch. Rum punch. <laughs> this punching got any punch? Yes, for funerals. But not surprise party. Well, the last one I went to was for my cousin. One of his wives had hit him over the head with a saucepan. He was surprised to be dead. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, Sinclair. Right, Sean, you got the blindfold. Yes. You know what to do. Yes. Listen, everybody, listen. Pork pie's coming in in a minute, right? Sean's gonna bring him in blindfolded, so... I wish you'd hurry up, Mum. I'm starving, man. Look, madam, I've told you before. Shh, 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 Positions, everyone, positions. Let's go for it. After uh, Hang on, pork pie. We're not quite ready upstairs yet. Wait there and I'll come and get you in a minute, okay? Sean, what's going on? All will be revealed, pork pie. Ah, ah. You promise not to look? All right, hurry up. I don't know what to say, really and truly. Say something truly and really. <laughs> well, if you want to know the truth, I could tell you. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. yes. 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 Look around you. What do you see? Friends. 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 A lot of wasted money. The money spent on all this could have been spent on something better. Pork pie! Shirley, he's better left alone. Well, that's what I like about pork pie, eh? He certainly knows how to enjoy himself, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> pork pie, it's me. Gloria. Come on, pork pie, open up, please. We're not in. Look, I come to apologise about yesterday. You come alone? <laughs> yeah, why? Anybody follow you? No. Yes, well, music and television is the only thing we have to occupy me now. Oh, yeah, you used to be in Dad's band, didn't you? That's right. He never talks to us about that band. What happened to him? We got old. <laughs> Who were they? My daughters. 
They're very nice. Are they? <laughs> Look, I come to apologise for yesterday. Must have been very embarrassing for you. You didn't embarrass me. You know what really got me was the waste of it all. I suppose you think I'm ungrateful. No. I suppose they want an apology. You don't have to apologise. I wasn't going to. <laughs> nice view. Get away from the window! <laughs> Who's gonna see us on the seventh floor? Them TV detector van can see through everything. Them know what station you're watching. Them even know when you turn off Jim Davidson. <laughs> oh, you don't have to be afraid of TV detector vans. They're only after people that have... You haven't got a television licence, have you? No. And I can't afford one either. £62.50. That's not a lot of money, is it? But from where me sit now, that is a lot of money. It's a lot more than my pension. It's funny. <laughs> I work hard all my life and what me have to show for it. A flat on the seventh floor on the worst estate in Peckham. <laughs> and one stereo, a TV I can't use, a gold watch that I pawn, and a selection of pork pie hats. <laughs> Why don't they give you something useful when you retire, eh? Like money. Everybody gets a gold watch. You know what I think? I think they give you a gold watch so you remember how precious little time you have before you kick the bucket. <laughs> Ah, no, but it's true. So, there lies the future of Mr. Augustus Neapolitan Cleveland Grant. <laughs> he has to sit here watchless, boxless, and dropless. <laughs> What's so funny? Your name? Augustus Neapolitan Cleveland Grant? <laughs> Augustus? <laughs> Neapolitan? <laughs> How is he? Oh, he's all right. How much pocket money do you get? Not as much as you. Why, how much do you get? Not a lot. <laughs> it's just that Port Pine needs £62.50 for a TV licence. Well, with my not a lot and your not a lot, we don't got a lot. <laughs> Although, Dad just gave me a pay increase. How much? 50p. <laughs> That's not a no, lot. No. Wait a minute. What? Don't worry, sis. I saw the ad for you. Man's gotta do what a man's gotta do. <laughs> <laughs> and then put 5k to Coco. Right. OK? Uh, come in. Yes, Mandy, what can I do for you? Uh, there's somebody to see you, sir. Show them in. You can come in now, Mr. Ambrose. <laughs> uh, do take a seat. Oh, safety. <laughs> uh, that'll be all, Mandy, thank you. What do you want? I just come to check out the scene. <laughs> yes, nice. Thank you. It's not bad. The manager's office is better, though. <laughs> you know, I can just see you in there with your name on that door. M.M. M.M. Michael, the manager. <laughs> <laughs> I bet the manager earns a good wage. Uh, yes, he does. This is not a bad career to be in, Sean. You should think about it. Hmm. How much do uh, assistants earn? Uh, enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that case... You don't mind if I ask M.M. for a loan? <laughs> you can try. All right. Can I have a loan? <laughs> oh, and would that be a personal loan, Mr. Ambrose? Yeah, a very personal one, from you to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. It's for a good cause. Oh, really? And who's that, you? No, not me. <laughs> OK, sure. How much? Uh, 40 pounds. How what? <laughs> he needed to pay his TV licence. After all the money I paid out for him and he walked out, <coughs> now he wants me to give him 40 pounds for a TV licence. No way. No, he doesn't know about this. Gloria Louise and me are doing it for a surprise. No. Not after the way he treated me in front of all those people. And he hadn't even had the decency to apologise. Well, he didn't ask you to spend all the money on the pie. That was your idea. No. What he would have really liked was a TV licence. No! Oh, we only need another 40 pounds. 
Probably the same as the weekly rent charging that phone of yours. So? OK. What about making an investment? Ah, what in? Me. <laughs> business to take care of, man. Well, I've got my 13 pounds. I've got my 10. I've got my 5. Plus my 10% increase, making a grand total of 5 pounds 50. 28 pounds 50. That's not going to get very far, is it? Well, it'll buy three months viewing time. Yeah, I suppose the fault that can. Yeah. Well, try counting this. Where'd you get that from? Michael. Michael? Michael? Yeah, man, me and bro are like this, you know what I mean? How did you get that out of him? The trouble is, you guys don't have to talk to him. See, there's a certain language between a man and his bank manager, you know what I mean? Oh, what man. did you say? I said I'll wash his car the next six months. <laughs> give me a kiss for that. Yeah, keep those lips to yourself. And if Louise were to give me a kiss. You know how we is. We'll feel better when that silly old fool Paul Pike come out of hiding. Name that tune. Buzz it. <laughs> what kind of tune is that? That is music from Senegal. Well, you could send it back. <laughs> I'm not in the mood. I went to see him last night, no answer. What do you think we should do? I think we should wait till he come back. He's gone round there. Good afternoon, all. How goes it? Yes, well, what's happened? Who's died? Nobody's seen pork pie since the party. Ah, that's very interesting. I gave Sean 40 pounds to go around there to help pay for his TV license. Did you? I hope he's all right. Sean's run off with the money. Michael, how you could say a thing like that about your brother? Hmm? If Sean say he wanted the money for pork pie license, then that's what he's done. Yeah, you tell him, Mum. Anyway, you didn't give me the money. Still got to clean your car for the next six months, remember? <laughs> Michael, how could you? Quite easily, Mum. He's a capitalist. And a face of capitalism has no art. Oh, I suppose it's all right to be a capitalist when you need money. That's the only good reason to have a capitalist in the house. You have the money, we spend it. Stop arguing. Louise, you seen pork pie right today? No. Anyway, what have you done with the money? Spent it. On what? Look, we put it in an envelope and popped it through Mr. Pork Pie's letterbox. I don't really know how to say this because I don't like charity. But I want to thank you all for helping me. It makes me realize that sometimes you can't fight alone and you have to ask for help. So uh, I want to thank you for your help and your friendship. I, I know it's a bit late, but I'd like to give this to you, Shirley, and say happy birthday. Oh, thank you, Pope Pai. <laughs> They're very nice. Oh, but these must have cost the earth. I can't accept them. I didn't pay that much for them. I got them from me. <laughs> oh, really? Well, if you don't mind me asking Paul Pie, how much you pay for them? You can't ask a man a thing like that. How much? Excellent value, sure. Roll gold a pan a pair. <laughs> well, it's the tart that comes here, pork pie. Yes, it's a nice present, pork pie. Hmm. No matter how much they cost. <laughs> but for you, cheapskate, it's the cost that counts. <laughs> Let's keep the music sweet to wind up your waist. 
would have done it myself. What's wrong with a good old fashioned haircut? That's it, it's old fashioned. Quiet! Yes, shut up. You told me you wanted a classic 1940s style. That's how they was wearing it. I should know I'm old enough to remember. I said I wanted a 1980s version of a 1940s hairstyle. I didn't want a bald head. <laughs> I suppose a tip is out of the question. There was a time when people wanted a haircut, now they want it styled. Well, things change. Fashion take over. I remember you used to have some fancy hairstyles yourself, Desmond. Uh, that's because we had style, didn't we, Popeye? Yeah, man. For a man who claims he had style, <laughs> this place isn't the epitome of it, is it? What's wrong with it? Well, for a start, the decor is simply appalling. No color coordination. Well, at least it's original. You can say that again. You see that lamp? I was one of the first people I know to buy that lamp. Now everybody got one. <laughs> Nobody with taste has a lamp like that these days. I do. Need I say more? <laughs> I must fix this chair. Next. Uh, nobody wants me to cut the hair anymore. I better join you, pork pie, and take early retirement. You don't want to do that. You end up hanging around barber shops all day. <laughs> I want you to go to the supermarket for me. You see what I've been reduced to, pork pie? A gopher. Gopher? Yes, go for this, go for that. <laughs> I better go for college. Oh, what lecture do you have today, Matthew? Is education a panacea to social deprivation? Go. Oh, <laughs> I better not keep you then. Bye. Come along, pork pie, let's go. Hey, what's this? One tin toms. Oh, go on. <laughs> Yo, Mom. See you later. Yeah, Sean. Where you think you going? To school. And since when they changed the name of your school from St. Christopher to B Street Posse? No, 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 no Mom. Beast Street with a T. I haven't got my T yet, though. Well, let me help you. Here's a sentence that starts with a T. Take it off. <laughs> No buts. No, oh, God. Yeah, sure, not on your top. Yeah, it matches your teeth. Why? Mm -hmm. Vex. What is the Beast Street Gang? Oh, it's a gang of kids that hang on the East Street, right? And they put the B in front of the name and call it the Beast Street Pussy. Uh -huh. All right, girls. Hello, Hello Lee. Oh, where is everybody, eh? Gone shopping. They're taking early retirement. Hey, Lee, you told me to put it on a bit of string and shove it round your neck so you don't lose it. Like, no, just no, seriously. All right, all right. What are these, eh? Oh, let me guess. Um, earrings? Oh, get out. Keys? Yeah. Car keys? Yeah. He's got your new car! car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what happened to the old motor, the black man's wheels? It was nice. No. Black man's wheels? BMW. <laughs> <laughs> Too conspicuous, always getting pulled up by the old Bill, were not I? Oh, would you fancy taking me to school then? Oh, well, I've got no business here, have I? Come oh. on. <laughs> well, I'll uh, be off then, Mum. See you later. Sean, what's in the bag? Uh, my pee kit. Let me see it. What do you want to see it for? You've seen it before. Go and put that jacket back. I've got Mum. No, no buts. What? Right, can I just see Lee's new car first, please? Man, read. <laughs> you have a punk? <laughs> you put it in there, and you push it in there. <laughs> you never push it in hard enough. How much harder do you want me for pushing? <laughs> and I ain't buying nothing yet. <laughs> oh, Lord. I wonder who the police wanted my glory and Lee. Maybe they want to know the name of the tape, Lee Plane. That is a hard tune. Oh, shut up, Popeye. What's going on?
going on here? What are you doing in this car? What's going on here? Yeah. Where is everybody? Gone shopping. The customer's gone with them. It's Wednesday, Michael. We're never busy on a Wednesday. I've been looking at the figures, Mother, and frankly, every day is Wednesday. <laughs> Look, we've got to do something about our image. I mean, for a start, what is that man doing on the phone? Making a phone call. <laughs> I know, but he's always there. Well, that's because none of the phones around here work. British Telecom said that nine out of ten public phones are now working. Yeah? Well, Peckham's got the tent one. <laughs> I still maintain that this shop needs a radical change. We have to convince Father to move with the time. Michael, sit down. Just sit down, please. Go easy on your father. You hear? You know what happens to him every time you mention the words radical and change. He goes a distinct shade of green, his eyes pops out of his head, and you two end up arguing. Hmm? He's been running this shop his own way for more than 20 years. <laughs> yeah, we've never made a great profit, but we've never made a loss, and none of our children have gone without. I'm proud of you, Michael. I'm also proud of your father. So just hold back the revolution, yeah? And let's do things gradually. And when the shop is yours, you can revolt to your heart's content. <laughs> gradually. Gradually. Yeah, fine. What are you doing back here now? The bank's closed? Lunch break. I just popped in to see Father about the accounts. Oh, you want something to eat? Listen, I got some stew and some banana fritters. I've, and... I've eaten, Mother. So you eat already? My food ain't good enough for you. Uh, it's, it's not that, Mother. It's just that every time I come in, you try to shove something in my mouth. I don't know anyone who likes the sound of his own voice like my eldest son. Hello, Father. <laughs> what kept you? The police are almost kept us. Uh, uh, Pope, Pope, I took them bags upstairs. What happened? Well, they wanted to see Lee's particulars, but everything was in order. We seen everything, didn't we, Pope Pai? Yeah, ma'am. You see, he was driving along, and suddenly as he yeah, go around yeah, the yeah, car... Yeah, 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 okay. That's my minor shop. But I... Hi, that's my wap, then. Hi, Bert. Mm -hmm. Right. How you want your hair cut? It's all right, I'll wait for Shirley. Thank you. <laughs> you want a haircut? Yes, yes. Well, that's what I'm giving you, a haircut. Uh, Dad, that's Shut up. I've come to get my hair coiffured. Look, this is Desmond's barber shop. If you want your hair cut, stay. If you want it coiffured, quaff off. <laughs> Look, Desmond, I didn't come here to be insulted. Why not? You didn't come here to get your hair cut? Ha! Hair cut? What do you know about a hair cut? You wouldn't know a good one if it poked you in the eye. Uh, <laughs> gentlemen, please. Shut up! Oh, Who you. are you, anyway? I'm his partner. You mean you got someone stupid enough to be a partner? <laughs> What do you mean, stupid enough? Look, man, get out of my shop. Yes, come out. I mean, no. <laughs> Don't worry. I am going. But I, 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 now look what you've done. Me? Yes, you. Our only customer and you forced him out. This is no way to run a business. Since yet. when you got the cheek to tell me how to run my business? Since I became a partner. Why did you become a partner and been telling me how to run my business? That's because we can be more efficient and I'm here to do that. And tonight I will show you my business plan. It's called a new step forward. And as suppose a new step forward means me taking one step backward. No, not really. Just sideways. Gradually. Gradually. <laughs> Right. I've looked at the accounts and profits haven't been too steady since 1980. There was a sharp increase between 84 and 85, but I don't know why. That's when the doctor told him to give up drinking because of his blood pressure. <laughs> so then what happened after 85? He stopped going to the doctor. <laughs> them doctors is all the same. You tell them you got a sore throat, they tell you you got a sore foot, then they give you a prescription for high blood pressure. <laughs> I went to my doctor about my migraine and he... Yeah, migraine? Isn't that a middle-class headache? <laughs> Since I've become partner, we've started to become more organised. The accounts are up to date, the shop's well stocked, and we're also in the black. Now, what else... Uh, look, look, get to the point. I'm fed up with all this Tory talk. Yes, man, get on with it. What does all this mean? Give them a chance. Go on, son. Thank you, mother. <laughs> now, 
All this means that A, you should stop drinking, and B, we need a new stylist. Ah, now I know what a new step forward means. Step on Desmond. No, no, no. Nobody's trying to get rid of you. What Michael is suggesting is that we get someone in to work with you. No. Beside you? Well, I... Uh... Under you. Ah, well, yeah. <laughs> Where do we find this new junior? His name's Tony, and he's the best in town. Well, he would be. We have to speculate to accumulate. Look, he'll bring enough custom with him to pay for himself. <laughs> Look at that smile. <laughs> I don't trust that smile. He's up to something. Hey, Michael. Who's Elizabeth Riley? And Sophie Thomas? And Brenda Jenkins? Uh, just some business clients. Leave that alone, Sean. <laughs> they tell me I can't cut here that I need a new stylist. Matthew, when I finish with your hair, I'm going to make them eat the words. <laughs> what are you going to do with my hair? Well, there's no need to take it so personal, Desmond. I'm not taking it personally. What are you going to do with my hair? Uh, keep your head still. The new stylist studied for five years at the top academy. What's five years at the top academy compared with 25 years in at the sharp end? Yes, but what are you going to do with my hair? Matthew, when I'm finished with your hair, you're going to be the talk of the town. Ah. <laughs> But I think I've got to catch a plane for Africa. <laughs> Father, may I take this opportunity to introduce you to Tony? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> a hundred proof pure rum. <laughs> Guaranteed to kill all household germs. <laughs> Dead. That's if it don't kill you first. <laughs> Everybody's sleeping upstairs. <laughs> yes, ma, you tell me that. We know that. That's not to tell you again. Give me some of that rum so we don't forget. <laughs> hey, Tony coming tomorrow. Who, who's coming? I told you already who he is. Uh, my whole uh, Ah, the white boy. <laughs> yes, my new stylist. They're going to use him to try and force me to retire. Well, I thought you wanted to retire. I do, but in my own time. Maybe better hurry up because you don't have much more time. <laughs> well, Whose side do you on? Tell me something. If you don't want him to come, why don't you tell him to go? Because the family wants him to stay. So why don't you tell them to go? Because he'll still be here. So why don't you and him go together? <laughs> because... Well, my look, give me the rum. You drink too much already. Ah, uh. uh. Why? He's a rootless times he live in, Popeye. Even my chair let me down. I'll go fix it once and for all. Uh, give me something to jam it with. Give me a domino. Can't use my domino for that. This is a high quality set, you know. Okay. Coming tomorrow. <laughs> Popeye, get out of my shop. Didn't you think he was tasty, Mum? Who was tasty? Trendy Tony, of course. Trendy? You call him trendy with all them holes in his trousers? <laughs> your mother must be ashamed of him walking down the street looking like that. Well, people pay a lot of money for them to look like that, you know. Mm. So I'm mm. wasting my time mending Sean's trousers. Oh, ladies. Oh, listen, sure, I've got a lovely little number for you. You like this, claw? Yeah, you know me rules about dodgy gear. Off the back of the lorry, like. Sweet as a nut, you know what Look, I mean. Look, I know all about the rules. Don't worry, this stuff's sweet. Listen, right? Wafer thin, credit card, solar. I repeat, solar-powered pocket calculators. I'll show you how it works, all right? Well, don't you have to be outside for that to work? No, no, they work indoors as well. 
Just... You need a bit of sunlight. <laughs> you don't want to buy one, dear. Come in useful when you go back to Guyana. I'd better be off. See ya. Math, you'll have one. You'll take them back to Africa. They got the climate. What a touch, eh? God. <laughs> That is a raccoon's tail, Mum. That? Ah. It's the B Street emblem. It's a knife. I know it's a knife, but we don't use it as a, as a knife knife. Well, what you use this knife knife for? Nothing. We just wear it. It represents a sting in our tail, you know what I mean? Oh, well, in that case, you don't mind if this queen bee take away this thing in the tail. <laughs> Mum, you can't do that. Watch me. I, I need it. Today's the day I'm going to earn my tea in B Street. Well, I don't care if you're gonna earn your X, Y, and your Z, but you are not, watch my lips, you are not leaving this house carrying this knife. Uh-uh. What you have to do to earn this tea anyway? Never mind. Uh, uh, what happened to your hand? Nothing. The other hand? Oh, that hand. <laughs> I ran into a lamppost. You were drunk. No, I wasn't drunk. I was mellow. Yeah, well, you're gonna be mellow because you can't cut hair. It's a good job, Tony, come in. Hmm? Look, I better go downstairs and open the shop. Bye, Mom. Bye, Sean. Put the jacket back. Oh, but Mom. <laughs> no buts. This is your chair. It's been giving us a bit of trouble recently. What wrong with the chair? Well, it jams now and then. Well, look, it's Jana. Use your chair. Ah, rule number one. Nobody uses my chair. It's my chair. That's why I use it. Well, you can use my chair. No, you can't use your chair. Why not? Because it's your chair. Oh, don't be silly. Of course he can use my chair for now. But, no, no, look, it's all right. I'll use this one. Right. Your clippers and scissors are over there. <laughs> I told you he was cool. He's really nice. <laughs> But men like that aren't to be trusted. They use their good looks to walk all over women. Oh, we can walk all over me any old time. Yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> you like some tea? Yes, yes please, please, sir. sir. <laughs> yes, please, sir. Yeah, Mum, where my Tony's tea? No, you won't. You're going to school. You will take sugar? Yes, yes please, please, sir. That makes you. Oh, sweet enough, eh? We'll see you later on then, Tony. After school, Tony. No, you won't. Now go to school, too, and he's here to work. Yeah, I've got something for you, Des. My name is Desmond. <laughs> Sorry, Desmond. <laughs> right. Name that tune. Java Jai. Yes. The Ink Spot. Yeah. Recorded 1950-something. <laughs> How do you know we play these games? Hey, oh, Michael told me. I've got a jazz and blues collection, Des. Mind? Must have got some rare grooves. Rare grooves? You know, old time styly. Uh, maybe we might get along after all. <laughs> right then, the first customer, please. <laughs> well done, Tony. I'm sure this is the start of a fruitful relationship. Cheers, mate. Don't you agree, Father? All right, sure, let's see you tomorrow. Des. Mund. Hello, yeah? All right, I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye, Tony. Bye. -bye. Takings were up by 50%, which means that if we continue at this current rate of growth, there should be a healthy profit at the end of the year. Which also goes to prove my theory that we needed a junior. <laughs> <laughs> but try working with him rather than against him, Father. <laughs> Give it a try, Desmond. If it doesn't work out, we'll ask him to go. Oh, listen, Dad, I still love you. Even though Tony is more handsome. <laughs> oh, do you want a hand? No, I'll be up in a minute, darling. All right. <laughs> if profits continue to grow, I'll soon be able to build a house upon you.
Here's this. Look what I found. Wait, I said, Pops. <laughs> I found him rapping at the top of his voice in the middle of the eye road. <laughs> Thought I'd better bring him home before the old bill does. Oh, thanks, Lee. I'll see you later, all right? <sighs> Look at you making a fool of the family. <laughs> Hi, Dad. Now, I'm a little bit drunk, but don't get mad at me. Because you do it all the time. <laughs> yes. But I'm over 18 and not legally responsible to anybody. I can do what I like. Yeah, man, you're well of age. No, don't be feisty. I've got a good mind to box you. You're still a little boy. What have you got to say for yourself? It wasn't my fault, Dad. They didn't give me the tea. Even though I drank the free cans of super tea you have to drink to get your tea. They still didn't give it to me because I wasn't wearing the raccoon's tail. Can you believe it? So you know what I told them they can do with their tea? They can stick it... On the raccoon again. <laughs> I mean, what have you got to do to get a tea? What's so important about the tea? Dad, if I had the tea, it meant I was a member of the B Street Posse. To get the B, you have to be bad. All that means is you walk around and look tough all day. E, easy rider. You do a few tricks on a BMX. A is for a key, though. S is for sex. You didn't, did you? <laughs> nah, we just lie about it. Everyone else does. <laughs> After all that, Dad, they still wouldn't let me join. Well, if it's any consolation to you, the same thing happened to me when I was just a little older than you. Some friends of mine were setting up a band in Georgetown. Well, to join the band, you had to have your own instrument. Well, I know they wanted a trumpeter, and I was the baddest trumpet in town. Jazzy D, they used to call me. So I work hard and save up my money, and I buy my own trumpet. So I went around to where the guys were rehearsing, and they still wouldn't let me join. And you know why? Because they needed a new trumpet, and I had a second-hand trumpet. So I left them on a farm my own band. <laughs> You don't need the B Street Posse, man. Farm your own posse. Blow your own trumpet. You're dread, Dad. Me know. <laughs> From the long gone nights with an ocean breeze to the dump and to the rain of London City. We come from the sun to live in the cold. I miss me rum. I want my coconut tree. Father, I can't read the paper. You can't read? <laughs> After all the education I give you, my son, the bank manager, can't read? <laughs> How many levels did you get? All right, all right. It's just that one is supposed to read quietly. You can't read this, can you? <laughs> the voice. Well, I'm going to read it with my voice. Uh, what's your paper called? <laughs> there goes my street cred. Lee again. Yep. What was his pass up? 1499. So exclusive. exclusive. I haven't even bought one, one yet. Yes. <laughs> well, what do you think? <laughs> I think I'm going to change before I go out. Well, I think we look like one big family. <laughs> no. Uh, listen to this. Last night, Councillor Clark Gregory was elected the youngest ever black Labour councillor. When asked the reason for this historic success, Councillor said, today Peckham, tomorrow leadership of the Labour Party. <laughs> Black man, <bar>, stupider. <laughs> Listen to you. It's no wonder black people never get anywhere. We never encourage ambition. We're too busy cursing each other. Hey, Mum, give us a hand with my hair. OK. Michael, I'm thinking of getting a loan from the bank. What for this time? To build me house back home. Father, to be quite honest with you, I don't think the bank would even entertain it. What if you were to die tomorrow? How would the bank get its money back? You hear that, Shirley? Your son don't care if I was to drop down there tomorrow. I never said that. All he's concerned about is the bank getting its money back. Well, you got a point. How would the bank get the money back? What? 
All right, I'll tell you. I'll take out a big insurance policy, bail my house back home, throw myself under a bus. You pay off the bank, you get a huge lump sum. I'm dead on everybody's hands. <laughs> Dad, you don't have to take it like that. It's just that, well, you're not a sound investment. <laughs> All right. What's his name? Councillor Clark Gregory. <laughs> My daughter going out with someone in the paper? Uh-huh. Only he doesn't know it yet. But tonight's going to be his lucky night if I have my wicked way. <laughs> have you met him? Yeah, I see him down the Young Socialist Club. I know he fancies me. Oh, tonight he'll be celebrating his victory, and I'll be celebrating mine. <laughs> well, dressed like that, he don't stand a chance. <laughs> No, I must say, I wouldn't go to all that bother for any man. First of all, they never notice. And by the time they had two or three drinks, they don't really care. <laughs> Thanks for the encouragement. Oh, no, don't misunderstand me, darling. But listen, get dressed up for yourself, not for any man. Yeah, but I bet you dressed up for Dad when you were caught in. Oh, your father and his friends were the sharpest, baddest dressers in town. <laughs> when they walked by, people used to say, here comes Jazzy D, Sweet Sticks and Super P. <laughs> What's Super P? Pork pie. Pork pie was a snazzy dresser. <laughs> well, he did have some nice hats. <laughs> but it was your father and Sweet Sticks that used to cut the style. Let me look at you. That's better. You look up. <laughs> Go and put on a proper skirt before you catch it. This is a proper skirt. It's too short. That's why it's called a mini skirt, Dad. You're gonna get all types of men following you around dressed like that. I'm not wearing it for all types of men. I'm wearing it for me. But they don't know that. Oh, it's the fashion, Dad. You look good, sis. Minor. <laughs> Oh, come on, Dad. I'm sure you used to be into fashion when you were young. Not only was he into fashion, he was Mr. Fashion. How did you know that? Mr. Fashion. <laughs> <laughs> Your secret's safe with me, Jazzy D. All right, all right, all right. I'll get it. Coming, coming. <laughs> Hello. Hello. You don't know me. My name's Amy. Uh, well, come in. Yeah. You must be Desmond. Garcia told me a lot about you. Garcia? Sweet sticks. Sweet sticks? That little crook is still alive? No. He's dead. Dead? That's what I've come to tell you. The funeral is on Monday, and he asked me to give you this. He said to tell you, let bygones be bygones? I let bygones be bygones a long time ago, when I waved him goodbye and he gone off with my money. Your money? Is that all you can think about? Listen, I'm sorry. Sit down. How did he die? With a smile on his face, bless him. We were in bed together when it happened. Only sweet sticks could die like that. No, no, it wasn't like that. We were having breakfast in bed to celebrate his 55th birthday. 55? He was more like 75. Really? Would you like to come upstairs and have a drink with me and the missus? No, no, I don't want to disturb you. I'll see you at the funeral then? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Dirty old man. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Who's that? 
What's wrong? Sweet Sticks is wrong. He's dead. <laughs> Dear Jazzy D and Sexy Legs. <laughs> As you can see, me dead. <laughs> when the doctor told me that my heart getting weak, I did think to myself, sweet sticks, you can either take this news lying down or you can carry on the way you've always done and go out with a bang. I decided to do both. <laughs> I'm going to take it lying down with Amy and go out with a bang. <laughs> I know things between me and you have not been the same since I borrowed your money. Borrowed? He stole it! <laughs> All right, stole it. <laughs> but Jazzy D, I was desperate. I've left my gold pan sticks as a way of paying you back. I hope you will forgive. I know I should have returned the money, and kept in touch. Jazidi, let's bury the hatchet. I would like you to say a few kind words for me at the funeral, since you is my oldest friend and enemy. <laughs> it's a pity me never get to meet Gloria and Sean. If they look like Michael, then they must look like little angels. <laughs> anyway, see you in the life beyond. It will probably be hell, because me hear that the heart is in heaven is not too cool, and I hear Calypso hasn't reached heaven yet. But me hear that Satan is a wicked sax player. <laughs> See you there, and don't forget to bring your trumpet. <laughs> Give sexy legs a kiss for me, sweet sticks. P.S. Tell Pope Pie I'm sorry about the hundred pounds. <laughs> Sweet stick sounds dread. Wish I'd met him. Hmm. Sweet sticks in his day was the hottest fan player around. I gonna miss him. All I gonna miss is the money he stole from me. <laughs> yes, man. He was one of your best friends. We all grew up together. Of course, I gonna miss him. So what are you gonna say at the funeral, father? Funeral? Who said I gonna say anything at the funeral? <laughs> 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 Uh, not you too, my old friend. Don't tell me Lee, fourteen ninety nine, and so exclusive. He hasn't even got it. How did you guess? It's nice, eh? What are you doing here? You doing exercise now? Who, me? Exercise? <laughs> you must be mad. You know, I have a theory about joggers. The men don't like their wives, and the women joggers are secretaries. They jog to practice. So when the men run off with the secretaries, the wives can't catch them. <laughs> Sweet Sticks is dead. Good. <laughs> he was a no good, selfish, womanizing, two-timing, money-grabbing. Did your mother never tell you to speak good about the dead? He did. He's dead. Good. <laughs> You sure he dead? You know what he's like? This might be another one of his schemes to get out from paying for his own funeral. <laughs> he was all right, really. It was just that he was a liar and a cheat. <laughs> Apart from that, you could trust him. You could trust him. Yeah, you could trust him to lie and trust him to cheat. <laughs> Why, the trouble he used to get us into. Remember that gig in that hotel in 62? We thought we was playing at the Eastern Caribbean Society. Yeah, but we end up playing for the British Legion annual dinner and dance. <laughs> they was expecting us to do the fox step and the quick trot. No, you fool, the fox trot and the quick step. <laughs> I know the names, but we still couldn't play them. How did he die? Heart attack. The funeral's tomorrow, St. Paul's. Tell me something. How come you here every morning these days? That's why. <laughs> a secretary? Nope. A wife. <laughs> and so I say to you, brothers and sisters, that sweet sticks did not falter when faced with debt. 
You're supposed to say a few amens and praise the Lord. <laughs> All right, okay. Yeah. <coughs> Amen. You're coming too soon. <laughs> and so I say to you, brothers and sisters. Amen. That sweet sticks did not fall to when faced with debt. Praise the Lord. <laughs> He looked that straight in the eye. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> he faced that straight in the eye and said, I'm ready, Lord. I'm ready to be received into your bosom. No. You see too much bosom or not to <laughs> see my bosom when you get to heaven. There's one. He get him buried in a Catholic church. Not an evangelist, Pentecostal, let everything hang out, church. <laughs> say something quiet, something you don't have to shout. I ain't gonna say nothing at all. The man used and abused me. Well, if you can't see it in your heart to forgive a friend who asked for forgiveness on his <clears throat> deathbed, then I feel sorry for you. Good night. <clears throat> Charlie. What you want? It's after one o'clock in the morning. There's no sign of Gloria yet. She should have been in half an hour ago. She out with Clark again. He seems sensible. The man wants to be prime minister. You call that sensible? <laughs> Come in, Gloria. <laughs> Your time is up. Mom, Dad, still up? No, we fast asleep. <laughs> <laughs> you're late. I can explain, Dad. You know what happens when you're late? Yeah, but Dad, I'm you're just... grounded for a week. Dad, I can Good explain. night, Gloria. <laughs> Why you didn't let her explain what happened? She's late and rules is rules. But there could be a hundred different reasons why she's late. The important thing is she's safe. So you better go in her room now and listen to what she got to say. Desmond. Go on. <laughs> Who is it? It's me. Go away, Dad. I can't go away. I live here. <laughs> I want to talk to you. I'm sorry I didn't let you explain. It makes no difference. I'm grounded. Well, it might. Really? I said it might. <laughs> what happened? Nothing, really. That's just it. Nothing happened. <laughs> well, we were supposed to go to this club, and then we ended up at the town hall at this meeting. And then everybody back to his place for a meeting about a meeting. And when I managed to talk to him, it was time to come home. So why were you late? Because I wanted some answers from him, and I wasn't going to leave until I got them. I wasn't going to stop in the middle of an argument and say, excuse me, I've got to go now, same time next week. <laughs> I'm sorry. You really like that idiot. <laughs> Sometimes you think you know someone, you know nothing about them. I thought I knew Clark. I bet you thought you knew Sweet Sticks until he ran off with your money. No, I knew Sweet Sticks. It didn't surprise me when he ran off with my money. It surprised me when Clark told me he was gay. <laughs> well, maybe we can renegotiate your car a few times. How about uh, 15 minutes for arguments, 30 minutes for breakups, and an hour for boyfriends who tell you that they're gay? <laughs> oh, Dad. <laughs> Desmond, hurry up or we'll be late. If you can't finish the speech now, you never will. Michael, did you write them few words I asked you to? Oh, put it away. What's that? Well, ask Michael to write a few nice things about sweet sticks, just in case your father can not manage it. <laughs> I'm sure you'll do us proud. You finish your speech? Yes. 
I hope you're going to tell the truth about sweet sticks. Yes, I will. Good. Are you going to read it at the service? I'm going to read a speech at the service. I don't like the sound of that. <laughs> Come on, Mum, because Lee's been waiting for ages. Ah, uh, Michael, I want a word with you. Uh, what do you reckon, eh? <laughs> You can't come to the funeral dressed like that. Look, this is so exclusive, I've only just got one. It cost me 50 quid. It's disrespectful. It's dead respectful. <laughs> <laughs> Look, come on, the motor's running. If you don't hurry up, you're gonna have to run after it. Hurry, you know what I mean? Hurry, hurry. Look, about that loan. Uh, hold uh, on a minute, please, Father. <laughs> Hello? Uh, yes, yeah. Look, can you phone me back later? Yeah, OK. Carry on, Father. I really need it. I mean to build that house back home before I die. Dad, I don't think I'm the right person to talk to about the loan. Why not? You work in a bank. Yes, I know, but... Well, it's just that sometimes people fall out over money, don't they? Well, like you and Sweet Sticks. Ah, oh, come on. I'll drive you to the church. <laughs> Look at all these women. <laughs> they should have called him Big Stick instead of Sweet Stick. <laughs> he should have left me his address book instead of him, Sticks. Shh. Wish I'd met him. Could have given me a few tips. <laughs> the tips in the world couldn't help you. It is our solemn duty to carry out in the traditional manner of God's faithful people the burial of this mortal body. <laughs> As we do so, we call trustfully upon God from whom all creation has life. May he, in due time, by his power, bring to resurrection with all the saints the body of this, our brother, which, in its frailty, we now bury. May God unite his soul with those of all the saints and faithful departed. May he be given a merciful judgment so that, redeemed from death, freed from punishment, reconciled to the Father, carried in the arms of the Good Shepherd, he may deserve to enter fully <laughs> into everlasting <laughs> company of all saints. Now, Desmond Ambrose would like to say a few words. You better not make a fool of yourself or this family. <laughs> What can I say about sweet sticks that hasn't already been said? <laughs> to many, he was a man of many talents. And today I'm standing here on his behalf. But I'd like to tell you about the real sweet sticks. The man was a cheat. <laughs> he was a liar. <laughs> and a thief. <laughs> I'd like to say that to him, but he'd only say to me, why tell me something I know already? <laughs> Sweet Sticks was my friend. I knew him for what he was, and I respected him for what he was. Praise the Lord! <laughs> and I only hope somebody up there likes him too, because they'll be missing out on a damn good steel pan player. And to send him on his way, I think it only fit him to send him off in the way I know best. All right, Padre?
I don't know what you laughing at. It will happen to you eventually. Childbearing hips, fat backside, sagging breasts. <laughs> Do you know what it feel like when the size of your waist measure the same as your hip? Huh? And your breast can hold a conversation with your belly button? <laughs> Wait. Hey, don't stand around. Looking glow, because it's Saturday, and we have come. It's a wonderful day, and we're bright and we're merry. The lines have to rhyme, so I use my dictionary from the special MC with the silver tongue, mm. and I like to say, good, good morning, morning Mum. <laughs> no, guy, you can't steal. That's fresh, man. What's wrong with you? Why not? Because you're always stealing my All right, all right, all right, enough. It doesn't matter. You all right? Yes. Mum, where have you put my red sweatshirt? I ain't put your red sweatshirt nowhere. It must be still lying on the floor where you left it. But my mom's gonna wear that today. Oh, what's stopping you? Because it's dirty. Sean, you can read, write, speak French, program a computer. Hmm? You can do all that, but you still can't put your dirty clothes in the washing machine and turn it on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can. Then do it. And while you're at it, I want you to wash the dishes, tidy your room, and clean your teeth. Shim. <laughs> It's not fair. Life is not fair. Oh, well done, Mum. It's about time men took more responsibility on the domestic front. You know... <laughs> what are you doing? Doing? I ain't doing nothing. You doing the doing. I want this whole house tidy before your Auntie Susu come. Auntie who? -hoo? You still here. <laughs> Auntie Doreen from Jamaica. Oh, yes. Auntie, the last time I saw you was this big, Doreen. Every time I seen her, she was always this big. And that is just the size of she mouth. <laughs> You're saying my sister is fat? Well, she ain't small, is she? I mean, she's like a whole heap of them women back home. <laughs> yeah, big mothers. You still here? I'll do that. I want to talk to your father. Oh, thanks, Mum. You can help Sean instead. Ha ha, shame. Sean? I'm still here, aren't I? I was just... <laughs> Desmond? Uh-huh. You think being fat is hereditary? Nah, we don't have nothing to do with that. I mean, fat people is fat people, in it? It's just like a skinny man is a skinny man. Sometimes you talk stupidness. Baldness is hereditary, like the Japanese are small. You ever see a Japanese basketball team? <laughs> well, that is just a characteristic of the Oriental man, like they have slanted eyes and we don't. Yeah, and we have big mamas and they don't. We have other big things and they don't. <laughs> You think my hips are too big? No. You think I'm fat? No. You sure? Yes. I think I am. Well, I don't think you are. Well, I do. Well, if you think you're too fat, then you're too fat. You see? <laughs> you agree with me? Well, I didn't say you're fat, it's you say you're fat. Well, what would you say if I look like this? <laughs> well, I'd say you look like a mad woman with constipation. <laughs> What is the matter with you, Shirley? I feel used, taken for granted. I feel ugly. Ah, uh, don't worry, man. Big Susu coming later. You, st you stand up next to her, you're bound to feel cheered up. I don't need cheering up. All right, all right, all right. Yo, morning, days. Morning. You again? Yeah, of course it's me. It's Saturday and your star stylist is here. Mind you, you're lucky I am. Last night, right? I get a call from this new client. Now, I don't want to go around her place, but she says to me she wants to show me her record collection. And why don't I bring a few of mine? <laughs> well, that was an offer I couldn't refuse. I thought, Sony, with these gifted hands, a large record collection, and my good looks, no trouble. So what happened? She opened the door, and she was, I mean, she was just beautiful. Ah, big days, a big mama. <laughs> Name's Alice. She could dance, man. What? We danced all night. <laughs> oh, she's got a wicked sense of humour. You know what, though, Des? It's funny how you can misjudge a person. Especially women, Tony. Women are the eighth wonder of the world. You wonder what's going on inside their heads. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that, mate. 
But watching Alex dance last night was definitely the ninth, tenth, and eleventh one. They're all rolled into one. <laughs> all right, listen to this. Yeah. I bet you'll never guess is who this. Morning, dance man. Morning, Tony. Morning, man. <laughs> I don't know what it is, boy. Boy, the hard tune. in the bomb yard by the ticklers. No. Is it dashing, dashing, by dashing, dashing? No. Then what is it? It's uh, Water the Garden by Count Lasher. It's how you know who it is. A man in the record shop said there's only three copies left in the world. He have one, I have one, yeah. and I've got the other one. That gives a small world, in it? Sometimes, Park Fire, you are so gullible. <laughs> We're here. That woman! The plane was late as it is. She then decides to go window shopping. Now, I don't mind. But we hadn't even left the airport yet. And she brings all this fruit. Why? We can get all this stuff down Peck and Mock. <laughs> so, so, is that you? Yes, that is me. Close your mouth, you'll catch flies. <laughs> so, we finally see the shop. It's Marley, yes? But it look bigger in the photograph. So where's she there? Uh, hold on, I go get it. Shirley, Susu come. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. That boy of yours is strong, you see. <laughs> okay, listen. I've got an appointment with a mortgage client, so I've got to. Client, my backside. <laughs> I come all this way to see my little nephew, and him telling me about client and mortgage and thing. <laughs> <laughs> now listen, Auntie, really. Stay I'm... put. <laughs> Now, Desmond, you're going to introduce me? Ah, uh, this is uh, Tony, our... Um... Stylist. This is a mango, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know what it is. <laughs> Hello? The man have a phone in him, puppy. <laughs> Whatever happened to a phone box? Auntie Doreen! <laughs> call me Susu. People only call me Doreen when them get angry. Eh, 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 turn round, make me look pan you. You're too skinny. <laughs> eh, eh, pork pie. Big D. It's who you calling big. <laughs> you can't see me skinny, no. Yeah, man, yeah, man, me can see that. But when Desmond, they tell me you was coming for your own, me never believe him. Why not? Because me never they think Maxwell would let you go. Maxwell, he's who that? He's who that? Your husband. Him is history, him God clear. So me looking for another man. I'm <laughs> sorry, sir. Well, Auntie Susu, we can't have your bags clutching up the place. We, we've got a business to run. I never put them there. You did. Look, just put them in the spare room. Him is a good boy, this man. Well. Sean! <laughs> You put our weird. <laughs> Shoot you. Thank you. Oh, you lose weight. Thank you. I mean, they think nobody did notice. I notice. You want to come down the Domino Club with me tonight? Domino? I never come to England to play a Domino. We see plenty of Domino back home. Now let her get settled down first, pork pie. I will take your sightseeing. I this never evening. come here for that. Music is. But I you look for. <laughs> Let me take you to a dance and we can boogie and thing. Not rest yourself, poor pie. It's a different thing me want. It's an intellectual man I want to show me around. <laughs> Come around here, you gonna find an intellectual man. But Matthew is intelligent. Matthew is an idiot. Matthew can speak for himself. <laughs> How do you do? So where do you comes from? Uh, the Gambia, you know, home of Kunta Kinte. You're a prince? No, oh, no, no. He's a student. You want some further education? What you doing tonight? Going out? With me, I hope. Who else? Uh, what about your two wives and kids? Well, you know what they say. When the cats and mice are away, the lion will play. I'll pick you up at eight. Forward! 
Let me help with your susu. -su. Sure. You have anything I can wear tonight? You mean to tell me you bring three big suitcases and you ain't got nothing to wear? Suitcase them don't have a thing in them. <laughs> they only have a little summer dress and thing. And since be in England, me now see the sun. Okay, look in my bedroom, in my wardrobe. Uh, England is a expensive country, you know. You're telling me. Well, me only bring a little few shillings for spending. You know? want some money? <laughs> you took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> so you think you're a lion and can handle a West Indian lioness? Listen, pork pie. There is an old African proverb that says, an old discarded sponge is only turned to in time of desperation. And she's not that desperate. <laughs> It's Susu. -so. She short the money. She only just come and she short the money already? <laughs> She's my sister. What's mine is hers. That's an old African proverb? Yes. Well, I've got a Guyanese proverb. It said old Africans who talk about old sponges should shut up. <laughs> Thank you, sis. I like your chin. Give me a barrels, no? <laughs> well, honestly, this is wild, man. Uh-huh. Mum's a bit down, though. You should take her out, Dad. Cheer what, her up a bit. What do you mean? I just text you out every Thursday? No, out, out, out west. Well, your auntie Susu won't text you out, out. <laughs> Looks like auntie Susu would be pretty busy with Matthew. When was the last time you took her out, Dad? How old are you, Sean? 14.75. Well, just over 15 years ago. <laughs> no wonder she feels neglected. Hang on. I know somewhere your mum really appreciated. Oh, when was the last time you took her there? Oh, just over 15 years ago. <laughs> I came, I cut, and I conquered. <laughs> You're off, are you? Yeah, I've got a new client to visit tonight. Ah, you see that pork pie? You see the new jet-setting lifestyle these young people live today? So where does this client of yours live? No, oh, Peckham. Peckham is a jet-set area. <laughs> Well, if she lives in Peckham, why don't you cut her hair in the shop? Oh, yeah. Got to do it upstairs. Now, look here. I don't want no conquering and cutting upstairs on my premises after hours. Sure, <laughs> Sonny Shirley. What? I'm going to give her the sexiest hair in town so you can take her out tonight. You're going to cut my wife hair? Look, Desmond. <laughs> We've been through this thing before. You cut hair and I style it. You chop and I caress. <laughs> You caress my wife and I'll chop you. I still can't believe it. What does Susu see in Matthew? The man is ugly. Well, she's been out with him nearly every night this week. The man's obviously got something. Yeah, African proverbs. Father, all I've been since Auntie Susu's been here is a minicab. Take me here, take me dear. She hasn't even enough mini petrol money. Well, you can afford it. You earn enough money. So what else would you have been doing on a Saturday afternoon? Ah, well, as a matter all of right, fact... All right, all right, all right. I know you're a busy man. <laughs> but you must find time out for your auntie. She's family and family have rules. She's allowed anything in this house. I mean, that is the trouble with people today. They've, they've forgotten all them traditional values of, like, looking after one another. Oh, all right, all right, all right. But she's still a pain in the petrol tank. <laughs> I agree. Where is she now? I left her and Lover in the car. They're coming in a minute. Matthew's in the car with Susu. <laughs> so what, Matthew? She was too strong for the lion? Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, we, uh, we were just having a conversation, that's all. <laughs> Thank you, Matthew, for a pleasant afternoon. <laughs> it was most enlightening. I hope that we can repeat that experience again. Well, the pleasure was all mine. <laughs> well, pork pie. An intellectual man can occupy me all the time. <laughs> so, how about you and me going boogieing tonight, for old time's sake? Me? 
Then you want me to pick you up? Yes, a clerk. And don't be late. <laughs> now, you see, Shirl, if you have it like this, it lengthens your face. So it's goodbye round dumpling face. Hello, long, elegant face. Tony, don't give me all that hairdresser's gibberish. Talk to me in English. You look nice. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> What's that? That? Oh, that's my own creation. Now, forget about Afro Sheen. This is Tony's gleam. Oh, really? Yeah, it's an exotic mixture of coconut oil, lanolin, cocoa butter, and a little bit of sh. You know who? Yeah, put a little rum in it and we can drink it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, lovely. That looks lovely, Tony. Yeah, well, I aim to please. Yes, I'm sure you do. <laughs> you know how it is, Shell. <laughs> Tonight. All right, I'll take it out. No, it's too late now. You've worn it. Listen, Doreen. Do you're angry. You only call me Doreen when you get of angry. Of course I'm angry, Doreen. You see? You said it again. Why? You must be vexed. Of course I'm vexed. I told you not have to shout. Oh, why you never put things back when you finish with them? Because I can't remember where to put them when I finish with them. Oh, I don't know where my earrings are. I was going to wear them tonight, Auntie Doreen. You vexed too. Well, you can have them. No. So what? Uh, and I suppose that is the last piece of chicken. Well, you can't have that back. <laughs> Boy, I don't understand you English people. You get vex easy, yeah? English? Who you call in English? Use! One minute you want something, and when me offer to give you back, you don't want it. Look, man, you just can't come in here and take things. That's not the way we do things. You gotta ask first. Then you don't have to shout. Who's shouting? You see what I mean about use? You is English. <laughs> this is my sister's house. Back home, you don't have to ask your sister for borrow things. You just take it. If she was in my house, she'd take anything she want. But you see, you English. <laughs> Everybody craven. A dress is a dress. A earring is an earring. I could understand if I borrow your car. That is different. OK. OK, Susu. You've made your point. Listen. You see that dress you're wearing? This man was gonna take me out to somewhere special. Was? I am taking you out. No. Well, you save yourself some money, because I don't want to go now. Oh, come on, Shirley. Why you never tell me I was going to wear this dress? Oh, what? What you want me to do? Put a note on it saying, hands off me own dress? This is my house. I don't have to do things like that. Listen, sure. I'm really sorry. I don't want to go out either. <laughs> Why don't I make it up to you and treat everybody to some take-in food? <laughs> I'll buy it, and we can sit around and have a chat. Well, since you're putting your hand in your pocket... Uh, what you want? Well, I'll have a crispy duck, uh, pancakes, uh, prawns in oh, chili sauce. We'll have fish and chips. Oh, right, you don't have fish and chips. All right, fish and chips it is, then. That is English food, isn't it? <laughs> Why are you going to Miss England if you ever come back home? <laughs> Michael, you have to drive me to the fish and chips now. <laughs> Where's Michael? Oh, he's downstairs doing the accounts. He'll be up in a minute. I want to see a toast to my sister, Shirley. Thank you for having me. I've had a lovely time. And the next time you leave a nice dress lying around, I'll still borrow it. <laughs> oh, at last we got you to ourselves. Susu, tell me, how is everybody? Still the same, nothing changed. Mm -hmm. And your songs? Still the same, they're not changed. <laughs> what about Rodney and Daphne? Still the same. Nothing changed. It's <laughs> in conversation, isn't it? Tell me this, man. What you going to do with that plot of land of yours? 
You still going to build a house on it? Yes, me is going to build a house on it and retire. You still have that fool, fool idea. What foolish about it? The West Indies have changed. It's different. You just said it's still the same. Nothing's changed. Well, it changed since your father lived here. There's a whole heap of muggings and killings and things, Sean. So what's new? A whole heap of unemployment. So, so, I'm going there to retire, not to work? What I am saying is that there's a whole heap of people with the same idea, but when them get back home, them can't settle down. It's disappointing, and some people can't take disappointment. Mm. Susu, your chariot is waiting outside. We book this, we book that, we book everything. In Sit down, you old fool. Ah! What are you talking about? Dad, mm -hmm. no. Can I have a word, please? In private. Of course you can. What is it? Did you take any money from the till? No way. Well, we're 30 pounds short in today's takings. Shirley, you borrowed 30 pounds from out of the till? No. <laughs> Look, are we going or are we going? You still mad about the other night? Mad? Me not mad. Me vex. Keep your kettle boiling. Next time we'll make tea. You mean that? Of course I do. Later, boss. Later. Anybody would think that this was a state visit by the Queen. Thank you, Desmond. It was nice having you. Please come again. But not too often. <laughs> Cheryl, let me take one last look at you. You know, that weight really does suit you. <laughs> Doreen, get in the car.